guys, this is Tara with Kittens Weights and Tarot, and today uh, I am doing another one of your requested videos, subscriber request, to see my vintage looking decks. So I only have, I think, a, a few actual vintage decks, like ones from the 30s, ones from the 40s, um, and one from the 60s. Um, yeah, so I have like three actual vintage decks, but uh, I have a uh, affinity for decks that have kind of like that tea stained look, that um, kind of aged, uh, you know, feel to them. So uh, although the rest of these decks are not actual vintage decks, um, I think that they have that kind of aged look, which is kind of, uh, it's an aesthetic that I appreciate. So um, if that's something that you are into as well and you want to see kind of what's out there, maybe uh, you'll be reminded of decks that you have and you're like, hey, maybe I should bust that out again and show it a little love. <laughs> you could do that. Um, but otherwise, you know, I think it's, it's interesting to kind of see what people utilize in their uh, you know, collection, you know, if they're a tarot reader or oracle reader or Lenormand or, or whatever it may be, like, what is it that you use? So for me, I like to make these uh, because I know for myself, I like to watch uh, deck collection videos out of curiosity. Like, I want to see what other readers are using and how they might utilize them. Um, and uh, also, you know, I just you know, it's for eye candy too, you know, I mean, <laughs> I'm very visual and sometimes I just want to look at some beautiful artwork, whether or not I'm like actually looking to get something. I just, sometimes I just want to look at some, um, some prettiness that's out there. So if you are looking for a little bit of eye candy, hopefully you enjoy this video. There are a lot of decks. I didn't realize how many uh, decks I had that um, had that aesthetic with them. So anyway, grab a cup of something to eat. I mean, drink. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't be drinking that. But anyway, um, let's start off with the very first deck, and that is the Nature's Pharmacy deck. So with these um, that I'm going to show you, I think I've done, I probably have done a deck review of every single one of them. So if you're interested in my deck reviews, go to my deck reviews playlist. There are hundreds of decks that are on there. Um, so go have a look, see there's like an actual proper review, but here I'm just gonna like show you like quick, like, hey, <laughs> here are my vintagey looking decks. So the first one is the Nature's Pharmacy and this is by the uh, New York Botanical Garden. And really that's, that's just what it is. It's just um, images of, uh, you know, flowers and things that you would see in the books from the um, botanical garden. And for me, I use them for like tea because, <laughs> you know, a, a lot of my magic lies in teas that I make. So, um, yeah, this is this is more of like my my tea deck, but it doesn't have it does have that um that tea stained look that I'm into, you know, as you can see, like in these images um and then in the backs it's just like information about that particular herb uh but you know that's that's how i roll i like i'm got a little herby heart i got a little green heart so um i did a uh i did a deck collection of like all my my flower and like herbal type uh decks and i think this was uh in there but um uh, I did a few other deck collection videos, so if you're interested, I did one for gods and goddesses. I've done one for like my animal decks. Uh, let's see, I've done uh, my dragon and fairy deck collection, which there weren't that many, but you know, I love them. Um, I think I've done like my dark deck collection, but I want to do an update on that. So yeah, if you guys have any suggestions, you know, like I said, uh, these videos are based on your suggestions. So this is the Magical Herb Oracle, and this is by Sherilyn Darcy, and it's illustrated by Dear Dandy. And again, as you can see on the back, it's got that kind of vintagey look to it. And also very simple. This was also featured in my flower and herb deck collection. And you know, it's got that little tea stained look to it. It's got that herbally look, you know. So yeah. So like I said, I'm just kind of going through these quickly because I've already done some proper reviews on these before. Um, 
let's see, what else do we have here? Ooh, well, let's pull from over here. We have the astrological oracle cards and actually I haven't busted this out in a while. Um, but the artwork, oh, where's her name? Here it is, is by Antonella Castelli. I love her artwork, by the way. Um, <clears throat> and the deck itself is by Linnea Weatherstone. So let's go ahead and pull these out. And this has more of that art deco feel. So kind of like 1920s type feel to it. So, you know, kind of that vintagey vibes going on. Very, very beautiful artwork. So yeah, I haven't, um, I haven't used this deck in a while, actually. Um, I think I want to start using some of these cards on my altar now that I think about it. Yes, yes. I think that would be fantastic. <laughs> okay. Um, so another deck that uh, the artwork comes, um, it's by Antonella Castelli, is the Flowers Oracle. And this is kind of based off of the Bach Flower Remedy system. Very beautiful backings, as you can see. And again, it's got that Art Deco feel, so that 1920s type feel to it, which, you know, I absolutely love. Hey, and if you want, you can go ahead and just like turn off the sound, play some nice music, and just let your eyes Feast on the glorious artwork of all these these artists. <laughs> That's what I would do. Um, okay, so this deck here was already featured in two of my deck collections, and this will be the third collection now. So it was in my Flower and Herb collection, and it was in my Dragon and Fairy collection, and now it's also in my uh, vintagey looking collection. And so this is the Enchanted Blossoms Oracle by Carla Morrow. And it just so happens to hit all three of those areas. So <laughs> it's got, as you can see, the flowery vibe. It's got the dragon vibe going on. It's got the vintage vibe going on. So it's basically all the things that I love. <laughs> you know, and I am a person that loves color, but there's something to be said for that like vintagey muted color. So you could still have, you know, tons and tons of color, but when it's in that like muted form, kind of like a distant memory, you know, it's just, just gorgeous. Okay. Next we have the vintage wisdom Oracle. And this was more like one of the one of the first Oracle decks mostly that I worked with, but this is by Victoria Mosley. And this was probably one of the very first deck reviews I've ever done. <laughs> you know, when I look back, uh, you know, cause I, I started on YouTube uh, about in 2016, in July of 2016. So actually my four year YouTube anniversary is coming up. Um, I look back on like my old deck reviews and it's, it's kind of cringy, but you know, I don't want to take it down because I want to, you know, I kind of want to show how far I've come. <laughs> but I still, I still love this deck. You know, I've had it for obviously quite a, quite a few years now and it's still a really, really good one to work with. I can work with it on its own, by the way. I don't really do, um, use tarot so much with this one more of a standalone deck for me. We have a very special bond. <laughs> um, okay, so let's bring that one away. And let's take a look at the Lunar Nomad Oracle. Uh, so this one is a uh, Lenormand and Oracle type deck. So there's 43 cards in here, so obviously there's extra cards. Uh, and this is by Sh Shaheen Mor uh, Muro. And let me take the cards out of here. Let's 
could just grab some of them. We don't need to grab all of them. These are massive, by the way. Look how big that is. <laughs> um, so with this, you could take out all the cards that are not Lenormand cards, and you could just use this as a Lenormand deck. Uh, but if you would like to also incorporate some extra cards, you know, and ascribe meaning to them, you could do that too. So that's why they call it an Oracle deck. But yeah, I think it's got it's got it's got a it's got an old tiny feel to it, I think. And the cardstock is like really thin, by the way, but um I just I still think it's a great deck to work with. Um and actually if the cardstock were any bigger, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be able to work with it. <laughs> so it's like a little catch twenty two, you know? Um Okay, let's put that in there. Oh, look, it's a little Loki. Okay, and then, um, where do I want to go? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. We're going to go here. <laughs> okay, so um, this deck here, um, I have in this pouch that uh, there's this Etsy shop called My Grandmother's Hands, and they make the best tarot pouches. But anyway, this is the John Waterhouse Oracle deck. Um, by Tarot by Seven. You can find them on Etsy. They also have their own website. And I think I've gotten quite a few of their decks over the years. I just really like their, their work. But this does not have any words on it. I use this mostly for spirit work and to find things when things go missing. Um, but obviously it's the artwork of John Waterhouse and then they also have kind of like this aged edging which I, I absolutely love as well. But yeah, the um, like the image quality is just out of this world. You know, it's it's one that I use quite often, you know, because I am doing spirit work quite a bit, quite a bit. Um, and that's one of my, my major workhorses for, for spirit communication and working with spirit guides and all of that. Um, cause those are offerings that I have in my shop. Okay. So there is that. And then we get to one that was gifted to me by my best friend in Belgium. So it's a deck that is in uh, English and French, and it's called Sweet Ladies Oracle, and this is by Celia uh, Malesville. Yeah, Malesville. And here we have this like kind of powdery pink look, and again, so we have some some old paintings. And just, you know, like even with the, the decoration and the, the font that the numbers are in, it's, you know, it's got that, it's got the old tiny feel to it. I think it complements the images quite well. And by the way, those of you that are very tactile, it does have that suede finish. So, you know, if you're into that, <laughs> I am. You know, I'm all about the senses. Okay, so there's the Sweet Ladies Oracle. I'm just putting that back in the box there. Bada boom, bada bing, bada bang. And we're gonna go over here. We are going to grab our Divine Muses Oracle. Heck yes. And this is a tight fit in here, but I'm just gonna pull out some of the cards. And they do have a very matte finish. Um, whoa. This is also good for spirit work, by the way. The cards just love to jump out just like they do. But here you can see they do have the, the very muted feel. I've done 
yeah, I've done a review of this one too. Yeah, I've done a review. I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, a, I might be missing a deck or two, but pretty sure I've done a review on all of these. Just FYI. Okay, another one that I have is the Tarocchino Mitelli from Bologna. Um, and this is supposed to be kind of like a, a recreation of a, um, a 1660s like deck, um, from Italy. And so I don't use it very often because the, the cards are, they're sort of coated, but you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm afraid of, uh, damaging them, but I bust it out every once in a while. And you can see it doesn't really have any keywords on here, but I don't think you need them. But obviously a little different, you know, a lot, lot skinnier, you know, than your average deck. Um, but it's just so cool. Like you feel like you're touching history, even though you know that the deck is like not actually that old because <laughs> it's a reprint. Um, but it's very, very special to me. I'm like, ooh, I want to use this after the video, actually. <laughs> now that I'm looking at all of these cards. And sometimes you need that with like videos like this, where you're like, ooh, you know what? I have that deck. Why didn't I? Why have I been neglecting it? It's little tarot feelings are hurt. <laughs> um, let me try to see um, on here who it says it's by and it says Giuseppe Maria Mitelli, uh, Mitelli Little Oracle, Bologna, uh, 1660, 62 cards and published by uh, Los Carabello in their uh, anima antiqua. So there you go. Alrighty. Um, moving on to another little aged gem. We have the Triumph de la Luna by Patrick Valenza. And I am a huge fan of his artwork. And this does have extra cards in it. Um, but again, it has that tea stained look. But also with the quirkiness that Valencia is known for. It's quite windy outside. My, my, my. So this is a fun and cheeky deck and, um, I see people bust out his decks more around, you know, the darker half of the year, Salad and, you know, things like that. But I, I like his stuff for any old time. Like I don't have decks that are just designated for certain seasons, um, because I don't have feelings and emotions that are just for certain seasons. You know, I think that decks span a plethora of emotions and therefore can be used any time of year. Okay. Um, my, my stack over here is getting quite high. <laughs> okay. And this one, um, okay. So this one is my, uh, hoodoo tarot. And I first saw this on Queen Osset's channel and she did a fabulous review of it. So if you would like to go uh, check out her review, um, she gives like so many like book recommendations and um, I just love her and I love the, how thorough she is, you know, with her reviews and her research and, and all of that. And so I opted to not review this deck because there were so many reviews out there that I just wouldn't be able to like add any extra information. So, um, but for me, although I, I don't have African-American heritage, 
um, I do have Native American heritage and I do have, you know, um, my Filipina, you know, so I'm, I'm Filipino and um, they were abalarios, you know, <laughs> uh, in the Philippines, you know, healers and, and a lot of what they used to do, you know, a lot of the different, you know, I have like the United Nations in my blood, okay, but <laughs> a lot of the different people in my family, their practice looks, I wouldn't say it's exactly the same, but it's, it's got the same type of feel as what I've learned uh, about hoodoo. And so for me, although this is not my culture, it's like looking into my own culture. I don't know if that even makes any sense, but it just feels like home, you know, when, when I'm working with this deck, I like, I feel like I'm tapping into my, my own ancestry. So this is fabulous and it's just aged so beautifully. Okay. And then we have by Usi here. The Pagan Other Worlds Tarot. Um, let's see if we can look at what it says at the bottom here. Printed in Taiwan by the Expert Playing Card Company. Um, yes, and I believe the career is just Usi. Okay, and here are the backs. Again, muted coloring, very nice. Not a whole lot of people in here, which I appreciate. You know, I'm more of like an, a nature-y type person anyway, and animals and all of that. It does have moon cards added into this deck, which I think is great to work with, but you don't have to. You could take them out if you want. The card stock is amazeballs. It's, um, Got a really sturdy linen finish, which I also love. Like, I love that that suede finish, yes, too, but um, I also really love linen. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this, so that's a, a fabulous deck. Um, put this away. You guys, go ahead and refill on that tea or coffee or... Hey, if you're over 21 and you're having yourself an adult beverage, go ahead and get yourself a refill. We are continuing on. All right, so this next one um, is obviously not by Knott's Berry Farm, and it is not cobbler mix, but I just really love to keep it in this bag. Um, and this is, or these are um, the Oracle of Oddities, I believe it's editions, one, it's all of the editions, one, two, and three, I think there was three editions, and it's by Claire Goodchild. Um, very simple, it is, uh, a lot of the art uh, is combined with um, old, like, um, medical, uh, well, medical art, I guess, um, and again, it has that kind of muted, tea-stained look about it. And I think I have four of her decks in this deck collection that I'm showing you right now. So <laughs> I'm a fan of her decks, but you know, they kind of also fit this category of kind of like that vintagey feel. So, I mean, what can I say? Okay, so here we go. So this one is actually a box that has her name on it, but there you go, Clara Goodchild. Um, she is the creator of the last deck you just saw and the um, next two decks after this one as well. Uh, so this was the first deck that I ever got of hers. This is the Antique Anatomy Tarot. Um, and there are the backings. And again, uh, artwork did come from uh, vintage medical books. But she just kind of like, you know, obviously put her own spin on it and made it this beautiful rock and deck that her stuff is just coveted by so many people. You know, she put some beautiful art out there, not just her decks, but she does, she does sell, um, actual, you know, paintings and things like that you can put up in your home. So, um, and she's done 
some other decks that I don't have. Um, but I don't know. I just, I like using these ones a lot more. Uh, okay, another one of her decks is the Momento Mori, again by Claire Goodchild. It's a Lenormand and an Oracle deck. Um, of course, you could always split it if you want to. So if you just wanted to read Lenormand, you could take out all the cards that are not Lenormand cards. But, you know, beautiful, tea stained, vintagey feel. Really, 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 really good for spirit communication. All right. Kind of, kind of moving along. Like I said, I do have um, proper reviews on, on these. So um, if you feel like you want more time with the cards and all of that, I do have proper reviews. So definitely check out that deck review playlist. So again, this is the final deck that I have of Claire Goodchild's. This is the Antique Anatomy Tarot, the Ephemera Edition. And she tends to have kind of like that vintage leathery look on the backs of her cards. So, you know, color, but not tons of color. Tea stained gray and white, black and white photos. Or artwork, I should say. So yeah, just beautiful. Um, me and the Antique Anatomy, we had a, for a while, like a good while, that was the only deck I was using out of my whole collection. Okay, let's see. We're getting down to our final decks. No, I mean, there's still a lot more actually. And we have one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I still have thirteen decks, you guys. <laughs> like I said, make sure you maybe have something to eat and to drink. Okay, so this is the Oracle of Mystical Moments. This is by uh, Katrin Veltstein. Really, really pretty deck. But I don't know the. The artwork to me feels more vintagey, or it has that vintage aesthetic, I should say. Uh, even um, some of the colors not being as vibrant as they could be, you know, that muted feel again that I rather enjoy in a lot of my decks, not all of my decks, but that's why I have so many decks. <laughs> you know, I have a diverse taste, you know. Okay. So that is the Oracle of Mystical Moments. And following that is a deck that I like to combine with it. And that is the Botanical Inspirations Oracle deck. And this is by Lynn um, Araujo or Araujo. There you go. That is the name there. Okay. So let's open her up. Beautiful backings. So gorgeous. I have always had some very serious readings with this. Like this, this deck does not mess around. <laughs> I think I mentioned that when I um, talked about it in my flower and herb deck collection. Um, yeah, that, that deck don't play. <laughs> I have quite a few decks like that where they are, they are straight to the point, a little cutthroat. Okay. This one by Layla and Olive is called the Pythia Botanica Oracle. Um, and they have a, a few Oracle decks. I just happen to be really drawn to this one. And I had an interesting relationship with this one because I had a really hard time connecting with it at first, actually for a good long while. Um, but now... Now we're cool. But again, off, obviously also tea stained. Very, very muted and just a few colors. Very simple. Just awesome. And check out those edges. 
that muted gold, which I think is great. Okay. Um, moving on to the Victoria Victorian Romantic Tarot, and this is by Baba Studios. Yes, I know, Baba Studios is expensive. I ended up getting this second hand um, from a very lovely person in our um, Facebook groups, you know, in the Facebook groups where they have like the tarot uh, trade and sell and all of that. So that's where I found this deck because I had desperately been wanting it. Beautiful, beautiful deck, by the way. Just look at the images. Again, kind of that old timey feel. I love it. I love what's going on in these, these cards. And for me, I'm more called to read outside with them. So if I'm gonna use this deck, I need to be outside. And they don't care if it's dark outside or if it's light outside or if it's raining or it's burning hot. Like these cards don't care. <laughs> they're like, it's okay, we'll be okay. And I'm like, but you're an expensive deck. And they're like, well, did you pay to stare at us or did you pay to work with us? And I'm like, I paid to work with you. <laughs> um, okay. Moving on to an oldie but a goodie. I say oldie because this is um, kind of in that when I was not beginning my tarot journey because that began when I was like a little kid, but more like really deciding that it shall be called a tarot journey. Um, so this is uh, Le Tarot du Femme Moderne, uh, or sorry, Le Tarot du Femme Erotiques. And this is by, hmm, well, I'm sure it'll say in here. Okay, it's by vintage eroticatarot.com, but I want to find the creator. Hmm. Beautyhistorymagic.com. Okay, so this is visit vintage erotica tarot.com to learn more about tarot download a free guide of to divinatory meetings find your sources of more vintage erotica hmm but i am not quite sure i know that when i did a review of this uh way back when i said who had created it so maybe go back and uh you can see that in my deck review playlist okay they have renamed some things in these cards using keywords that maybe I or phrases that I wouldn't come up with necessarily when um, looking at those particular meanings but I love that it's such a different slant on things and yes I do love uh, the human form you know I don't find it to be um, vulgar in any way I find that it is very tasteful um, the female form is beautiful so I am I love using this deck. Oops. And there we go. Okay. And actually I saw this image when I visited the actual bird cage, bird's cage in uh, Tombstone, Arizona. Okay, we are gonna go to maybe one of these decks here. Much smaller deck. This is Mildred's Secret Pocket Oracle. Mildred Payne's Secret Pocket Oracle. You can see it's got that tea stain look, also by Patrick Valenza. Like I said, I'm a fan. Very simple things of artwork. It's as almost as if you found it in a secret cache somewhere. But this one is almost exclusively used for spirit communication. I work a lot with spirit. That's why there's, there's a few decks that are just dedicated to that. 
Okay, um, I'm gonna go with this deck here. This is the Beautiful Rebellion Tarot. And I had gotten this one because the Tarot of Delphi, uh, I couldn't, can't wait around for whenever they're going to, or not decide to, decide or not decide to do a reprint. Um, and I find that this one, I'm really happy with it. So now I no longer lust after the Tarot of Delphi because I'm very happy with this deck in all of its beautiful old artwork ways. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. They did a great job with this deck. I'm happy with it. Hey, if Tarot of Delphi decides to do a reprint, that's great, but I have a deck that I am in love with now. Um, then we move on to of my Lenormand decks, actually. This one is the Natalie Rose Winter Solstice Lenormand by Tarot by Seven. You guys saw that um, I had a John Waterhouse Oracle deck from them. So again, you got the vintage look mixed with some vintage images. Given a very nice feel to this Lenormand deck. And then I have another Lenormand. And this one is the 1889 uh, Lenormand. And again, let me see if I can um, buy for the Seekers. There was a lot of controversy um, way back when this came out, uh, because some people, I guess they, they backed him on Kickstarter. Um, I had gotten it after all of that. Uh, see, there's the muted gold edging. Um, but some people didn't receive their deck and some people did, and some people were having trouble getting a hold of the creator. So I don't know, there was all this drama. Um, I ended up just getting mine after all of like the that I guess <laughs> um, and I'm I'm really happy with it so and it's also aesthetically very pleasing and actually so is the box can I say like check it out okay and I know I've done a review of that as well and then we have Pam's vintage tarot and there are a few places that sell this um, online. Um, I can't remember hmm, off the top of my head. Let's see if there's a title card in here of where I got it. Aha! There we go. Original art by Pamela Coleman Smith, uh, re <laughs> restored by Real, um, and uh, it's copyright lucky card. So yes, created by Real. Um, and I know there's a few sites that sell it, but like the packaging looks different depending on the site that you get it from. But yeah, they're much smaller, obviously. The keywords and all of, I mean, not the keywords, but like the titles and everything are all cut off. And there's some extra uh, artwork in here by Pamela Coleman Smith, which I just leave in and I just use it like like it's a tarot deck with a few oracle cards like thrown into it. I, you know, that's that's just how I roll for me. More cards, the better helps my readings. You know, I was not a huge like Rider Waite Smith fan. I just like never connected with the images. Um, and I don't know, like one day I was just like I kind of, it's like quirky, like I kind of like it. So <laughs> I have a few uh, RWS decks. Um, then we get into this big mama here. It's called the Tea Leaf Fortune Cards uh, by Ray Hepburn, illustrated by Shauna Alexander. 
uh, put out by US Games. Okay, so these are red interesting. Okay, so we have your, your tea leaf cards. We have your um, months of the year cards and your astro house. They're meant to be red in a particular way. I'll just kind of turn around like the astro house, but um, as for like the sake of this video, I like it because it's got the tea stain look to it. Um, and here you have the, oops, like the months of the year. And then you have your tea leaf cards. So it's like if you wanted to use cards instead of actually reading tea leaves, you know, in a, in a cup. I don't know. I love this. It's pretty cool. The reason for the ginormous bag here is you're meant to put all of them in the bag and like kind of shuffle them all around because there's so many cards and then you like start pulling the cards out. So, you know, it's a wonderful idea. Put the book back in. And the last three decks that I have to show you <laughs> are my actual vintage decks. <laughs> so the rest were like vintage -y, but these are my actual, actual uh, vintage decks. So maybe I'll just, you know, pull these, these two out that I keep together. Um, so this one is, um, just like your, your fortune telling cards. Uh, but this is from the 1930s. Um, these fortune telling cards are like from the 1940s, but it says inside what, what year. Um, so we'll take a look at this one first. And this one I got off of eBay and I don't know if you guys do this thing, but I love the smell of old stuff, whether it's old cards, old books, old clothes. <laughs> so this actually has the tea stained look. You know why? Because it's actually old. <laughs> this is not stained in any way. These cards were actually white at some point. Um, but yeah, I, I love like, uh, like to hold an actual vintage deck. Totally awesome. Yes, yeah, so there's, there's those. And I know that in the very fragile paper that's in there, it says what year, um, I'm in Roman numerals, but I, uh, and I know I did a review on it too. So no worries there. And of course we have this one from the 1930s and there's only one error on this one and that is the baby card was never printed so it came out as a blank card um but when i see it i'm like okay i can use this because this will be like newness like creation something new so now i know that the baby card is blank but maybe it's meant to be blank <laughs> at least for my purposes so obviously vintage image uh, like imagery like it is vintage it's not vintage like it is uh, and ooh it does have the the old edging because it's actually old <laughs> so yeah I dig that and um, I just keep both of them together because they're so small um, they're just playing card size hold on let me get this back in without messing it up um, I just like to keep it in a bag to just keep the boxes themselves um, pristine-ish because you know the boxes are already old they've they've already taken a hit you know over the years and the final deck is one that my uncle gave me uh, passed down to me from a friend of his um, and this is an OG RWS and I did a review on this one, um, but it's the third edition of Waitsmith. So it's not a Ryder Waitsmith, it's a Waitsmith deck, and it's from 1961. And you can see it's been well loved <laughs> over the years. Um, but yeah, my, my uncle's friend had it first and then gave it to my uncle uh, back in like the early 70s. Uh, and then my uncle gave it to me last year.
So yeah, I love the, uh, the trippy colors. They're quite out there. <laughs> I like it. Um, and also, you know, aged, aged well, aged to perfection <laughs> and great cardstock too. I'm like, dude, they had some good cardstock back in the day. All right. So that's it for me, spiritual homies. That was everything in my, um, my vintage -y plus actual vintage deck collection. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, again, I always look forward to your suggestions, you know, so um, I'm trying to, you know, make videos that you guys are, are looking forward to. So anyway, that's it for me, spiritual homies. I hope you enjoyed this. If you dug it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to click subscribe and don't forget to click that ding, ding, ding notification bell for more videos just like this. And if you want to catch a reading for me, head over to www.kittensweightsandtarot.com where I have a plethora of readings. I have my room and body sprays. I have my salves, which my goddess of the rose salve is like one of the most popular ones. Um, I have my altar pendant, so I have my travel witch altar pendant. Um, I also have my, um, ooh, brand new rainbow bridge ones uh, to honor your furry, feathery, or scaly loved one. Um, and I also have my ancestral pendants, you know, my Dia de los Muertos um, ancestral pendants as well. Um, I have, um, I, you know, there's a lot of things on there. Oh, and then my Wally's World Oracle, which is community created and community funded. Uh, you know, since I'm always trying to bring community together, you know, always trying to come up with events and things so that we can all come together as one, because that's how it should be. One earth, one people. All right. So that's it for me, your spiritual homies. Uh, if you want to send a little love my way, think about joining the KWT tribe over at patreon.com slash kittens, weights, and tarot. And I will catch you spiritual homies later. Peace, love, and chicken grease. Peace out.